We're so pumped to be welcoming our next guest to the show. To quote Woody, can't wait to smell him. Unfortunately, until smell vision is invented, you'll have to make do with the radio. If you do want to see him, head over to our Insta. He's in really good nick. He's an Australian music juggernaut, having sold over 1.2 million albums in this country alone and receiving 17 ARIA nominations to date. He's here to chat to the boys and bust out a song on a 20 20- $5 Casio keyboard for one of our favorite segments, Casio Karaoke. Please welcome to the show, Pete Murray. Pete Murray. Pete, back out on the road. Yeah, it's been good, guys. I've been playing a few festivals that were put off like 12 months ago yeah. mm. when COVID hit. So, yeah. um, you know, they're just, uh, we're getting through those now. So it's good to awesome. be back playing some live, you, live you, music, you know. Yeah, you're definitely fit, Pete. Absolutely. I'm seeing you now. You're, you're, you're 51 years old, though. How does it go getting the rig back out there doing the live performances? Oh, mate, it's not getting any easier, let me tell you. Yeah. I think you know, the, the older the body gets, I've got I've had two knee reconstructions from rugby. Really? Yeah, um, right, yeah. yeah, so they get a bit bit sore at times, but you know, I, a, lot, a lot of my mates are going bald and fat, so like, I'm not like them. So, are you having a direct yeah. go at Will yeah, there? Yeah, was that a stab? Uh, was that a stab? Well, not... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your good friend Will Slides. Did, did, did I look at Will when I said that? No, I did, no, no, did. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't. So many. He's responsible for so many of my tears at the moment. Let's get down to uh, down to business here because uh, Pete is in here uh, as well. He's agreed to do something very special for us. It's mm-hmm. our segment called Casio Karaoke. Yeah. Um, and the way this works is we've got a little uh, twenty-five dollar Casio keyboard, um, and we give musicians one song to write a song on the Casio. And then we we do it next. Yep, cool. I've never played Casio before in my life, so okay. But well, I could probably maybe we get some beats on that thing and maybe yeah, use man, acoustic or something. You mm-hmm. can use it in any way yep. you like. It's got Great. automated beats on there. We can figure that yep. out as a backing track, and yep. you can still rock the guitar, which is your axe, your weapon of choice, obviously. <laughs> uh, now let's um, but let's talk about the uh, the the topic of the song because we, we've kind of just thrown this at guests yeah. in the past, and mm-hmm. I know this might be a bit of a challenge for you, but um to hear this in general but our button pusher Joel is also a big fan give yourself a round of applause Joel I know you're okay Uh, (laughs) huge fan huge fan now do you want to I mean you were a huge fan particularly up until a point in your life where you were at a Pete Murray gig do you want to run Pete through that (laughs) yeah Pete I've been waiting 18 years to say this (laughs) (laughs) you son of a no Uh, (laughs) well it is it's an interesting tale I went to a Pete Murray gig with a girl I had a huge crush on and uh, my plan was go to the gig obviously great songwriter the vibe is right up there it's perfect time for it and and an after party I would make my move Mm. yeah did you organise to take her there or were you just going to be a weirdo and sort of stand next to her (laughs) I think I just did the weirdo thing did you yeah. yeah, that was your first strike. Well, well, it got it got progressively worse because obviously, as a Pete Murray fan, she's watching him and he's just crushing it. Yeah, she knows crushed. all yeah, the yeah, words yeah. to every Pete yeah, song, yeah, and yeah. that we were meant to go to this party afterwards. And that's where you're going to make your move. That was the plan. So a bunch of fans after the gig were invited to yeah. go back and pose and get photos with Pete after yeah. the gig. Yeah. And of course, she's there screaming every word. So yeah. their management's obviously gone. Whoosh, and never saw her for the rest of the night. So, <laughs> so do you want an apology song, Joel? Is that what you're after here? Like a, a Pete Murray saying sorry in song or what what we I feel like that's probably what's owed to me. You had a connection. And she later became my fiance, so we didn't (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they've got three beautiful children, Joel. (laughs) But I'll still apologize for this. Oh I love that. All right. Well the way this is we got one song uh, to write and then on the other side Pete Murray is gonna be coming back with a version of Casio karaoke with an apology song to our button pusher (laughs) Joel. Doesn't get any weirder than this. It's a Wednesday afternoon. I hope everyone's having a wonderful drive home. You're listening to Will and Woody for McDonald's. We've got a super special guest in the studio for what is becoming easily our favourite segment. Casio Karaoke. Casio Karaoke. Casio Karaoke. And Pete Murray's in the studio to do Casio Karaoke. Jeez, Pete, we're bloody excited about this. So we've had uh, G Flip do this. We've had uh, Eddie Perfect come in and do a bit of a musical number on here. Mm. Uh, You've come in, and again, we only give you one song to write a song on the Casio. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're sticking with your weapon of choice, uh, the axe that you're holding there, beautiful acoustic guitar. Mm. Mm. Um, But you will be running a a Latin 
style drum beat in the background here. Yes, yeah. We're looking for something that's, you know, new and inspirational in my music. And mm, I think yeah. that's, this could be a future recording for me, I think. Yeah, you wow. can buy it off this, us for, wow. for $20,000. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, now, Heard it here first though, guys. Pete Murray is going Latin. <laughs> that <laughs> is a sound. Now let's get down uh, to what this actual song is because we only give you, we get, we tell you what the inspo is for the song and you only got one song to work it yeah. with, man. And uh, the inspo for this song's come off our button pusher, Joel, who's kindly nominated a story from a long time ago where he, had his heart broken by you, yeah, Pete Murray. Yes. Yeah, I went to a Pete Murray gig with a girl I had yep. a huge crush on, and uh, my plan was go to the gig, obviously. Great songwriter. The vibe is right up there. It's perfect time for it. And at an after party, yep. I would make my move. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She and many other fans yep. were ushered off to take photos with Pete after the gig. Yeah. I never saw her again. Wow. Mm-hmm. And uh, wow. He, he just ruined my whole life. Wow. Right? <laughs> Pete Murray. <laughs> So, even though you are happily married now, Joel. I've got two beautiful okay. kids, I'm married, but yeah. You're a happy guy, you're a happy and guy. Do, and do you feel guilty about that, Pete? Not in the slightest bit. No. <laughs> That's perfect. Screw you, Pete Murray. <laughs> now, we've been workshopping Pete yeah. during the song there, and we've decided to do a song uh, from the crush's perspective. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Look, I, I couldn't do it any other way. I mean, I, I don't think we could do it from Joel's perspective, because mm. I think what, you know, he probably thought he was being normal where he was mm, probably being yeah. a weirdo uh, but this is Pete's penance uh, for stealing the love of your life at that time he's doing a Casio karaoke song Latin backing uh, and we've worked this into uh, Better Days which is um, seen better days. absolute cracker mm, mm. Uh, off the album Feeler which we all loved a lot um, are you ready to go? as good as I'm going to be okay I'll kick the beat off nice ooh yeah I saw him coming, this red-haired, widowed-looking young man. And I started running, but when I turned around, he was always standing there. He was nervously sweating, and when he started smelling my hair, <laughs> then I saw Pete Murray strumming, and all I wanted to do was get right over there <laughs> Joel seen better days The sad youthful romance He tried way too hard But he came across weird And just peed in his pants What? Here we go Joel seen better days <laughs> The sad, sad youthful romance, romance. He tried way too hard, but he came across weird and just peed in his pants. All together now, the nanas. Yeah, baby. Na 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 I still hate him. (laughs) (laughs) Well played. Well played. Great stuff, mate. Uh, Pete Murray, gee whiz, he is back with a vengeance, guys. Mm. Get all his new music. PeteMurray.com. Pete, thanks so much for coming in, man. Thanks, guys. It's been a pleasure, bro. It's the Will and Woody podcast. Woods, the Netflix show Bridgerton. Uh, Mm. Obviously been available for a while now. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but if you haven't seen it, it's kind of like a combination between uh, Pride and Prejudice and Suits. Yeah, sure. I think everyone's got Sprinkle it. Sprinkle a little bit of Gossip Girl in there. Yeah, yeah. All these things. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> and it's a period piece. It's, 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 yeah. it's a period piece. Most importantly, it is a period piece. Uh, but yeah. everyone's talking online about just how sexy this show is. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, and even more people online... Are talking about Sorry, when you say sexy, you mean like not just like cool, hot, sexy. You mean like there's actually sex scenes in there, full on sex. Wow. Scenes. Okay. So I think uh, from what I understand about ep three or four, the, the thermostat gets turned up to high. Uh, and, really. And the sex really starts happening. Uh, and a lot of people online are talking about the awkwardness of watching the show with their parents. Oh uh, right! Because like, all of a sudden, you know, you think you're watching a period piece yeah. with mum or dad, and then all of a sudden, there's all these sex scenes. All of a sudden, Gary mm. the gardener. Mm. Yeah, wow. Yeah. 
Gary the Gardener, he puts down his hoe uh, and, you know, gets into it. Uh, anyway, uh, so there's one tweet. Yeah, is that a gardening used, double on top Because hose. that was unacceptable. Uh, anyway, I'll read one tweet uh, as the... Puts down his uh, hoe. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to read a tweet, Will. I'm going to read a tweet. Yeah, yeah, sure you're going for um, the hose there. I mean, that was the low-hanging fruit. <laughs> no, this is the vibe of what everyone's yeah. saying online. Uh, so one woman said, unwittingly watched Bridgerton with my parents. Mm. It got too awkward midway through episode five so I faked a coughing fit and went to get a glass of water for the rest of the series learn <laughs> <laughs> learn from my mistakes friends so that's yeah. the general vibe yeah. uh, I want to ask everyone right now 131065 is the yes. question because yes. people have talked about not wanting to watch this show with yeah. their parents I'm asking yeah. everyone yeah, yeah. what do you wish your mm. parents weren't there for Tash what happened with you uh, they were there for the birth of my first child. My mother got kicked out of the labour room and my dad came in after the birth when I was getting stitched. Oh, oh wow. Oh, Sorry. my God, Tash. It- now, if I can just take you back there. Amazing if you remember this. Not sure how many uh, uh, drugs you had to help you get through the pregnancy, but <laughs> did your dad say anything? Because this is dads are famous for these moments. They're in this position. No, he just walks in like... Like it's his house, and just goes to his grandson, and just stands there looking at his grandson while my legs are up in the air. Yeah. Oh, oh my jeez. It's the Will and Woody podcast. Right now, you have to try and convince us there's someone else in the car with you. It's final line. Will and Woody's phone alone. Here we go. We got Cassandra here, who's called us on thirteen one zero six five. Hi, Cassandra. Hi. Oh, you sound very excited. Who are you in the car there with, Cass? I'm with my man, Joshua. Oh, Joshua. 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 Uh, can you put Joshua, Joshua on the phone, please? Yeah, hold on one sec. Hey, dudes, what's doing? <laughs> hey, Josh, uh, what's your favourite part about Cassandra? Her happiness. Her what, sorry? Her happiness? Her happiness. Oh, sorry, you <laughs> okay. slipped you're, character you're there, Cassandra. <laughs> <laughs> you're in the car alone, Cassandra. Thanks for call, Cassandra. Oh, well, let's go to Josie now. Hi, Josie. <laughs> Just... Hi, how you going, guys? Hi, Josie, we're good, yeah. mate. This is good, this is good. You got someone in the car with you? Yes, I've got my two grandsons, Parker, who's four, and um, Harvey, who's two. Okay, let's let's talk to Parker first, please. Parker, talk to the boys, please. No, no, no. Come on, Parker, talk to the boys. <laughs> no, no. Come on, just say hello. Hello. <laughs> Parker, you can say more than Parker. You can say more than that. Come on. No. Oh wow, he's shy. That's a great story. He sorry, sorry, Josie. That's Parker. Uh, what's the other one's called? What's the other one called? Harvey. Harvey. Uh, and he's two. And Harvey's two. Think... Well, let's have a chat with yeah. Harvey. I mean, we've heard from Parker. Let's hear Harvey if we can. Harvey, come on, say hello. Don't just shake your head. Just say hello. No, stop waving. Say hello. You have to say hello to them. Give us something, Harvey. No, I, I, I can't. He won't. He, he won't. only waves. He only waves. Right, well, oh, give us Parker one more time. Wave. One more from Parker. Give us a little, little something from Parker. Parker, one more hello. Come on, one more hello. No, no, no. <laughs> Thanks, Josie. <laughs> Josie, you're definitely there. <laughs> hey, the great start. She's great, Josie. She's I love very, that. She's talented. Love the commitment. Just um, couldn't get. I just wanted the two year old to talk <laughs> so badly. I feel like she was at the upper echelons of what she had to offer. Uh, let's go to Haley now. We'll end on this one. Haley, hi. Hi. Uh, who are you in the car with? My mum. Your mum. Okay. Can you put mummy on the phone? We we'll just go with mummy. Hi. Hi. Oh. God. What's What's your name, mum? My name's Brooke. Good day, Brooke. Um, Interesting. What do you th- uh, how, uh, What do you love about your daughter, Brooke? What is there not to love about my daughter? <laughs> <laughs> what's, her, what's her best feature, Brooke? Um, I don't know. She's pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah right. Lucky she didn't get your masculine voice as well, <laughs> which is handy. Uh, we do think it's the same person, though, Hayley. Nah. No, oh, no, we are two people. Oh, sorry, sorry, oh. sorry. Oh my God, Haley's mum. I'm, oh, so, oh so, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I thought if she was. I'm so sorry. Haley's <laughs> mum. I'll send you money. I'll send you cash. I'm so sorry. Oh my God. What did you say? No, At nothing. Least she didn't get your masculine voice. <laughs> I thought. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's the Will and Woody podcast. We've got a ripping guest in the studio right now for all of you guys. Oh, 2021, you delightful little thing. Woo! You've allowed our guests to actually come in the studio. And we've got one ready to go right now. The last time we saw this funny fella was in May last year when he performed stand-up to three people on Woody's porch. You know, standing here with you two guys on this porch, I've yeah. never had a moment where I regret not going to uni more in my life. This is my dad watching right now going, this is why you should have gone to uni, okay. Nate. Good times. Since then, he's done, well, nothing. His boyfriend, on the other hand, is an infectious disease scientist. So he's basically been saving the world. One tiny little COVID germ at a time. Here to tell us what it's like to be the Robin to Batman and the Lois Lane to Superman. Welcome back to the show. It's funny man, Nate Valvo. Yeah, wow. Back. That was an intro slash a bit of a roast. Yeah, a bit of a burn at the end. Yeah. Um, Ouch. Yeah, we, we don't write that. Uh, As if. But LJ, no, we didn't write, we who know, to be fair. is right behind you there, has pretty much said that you're punching above your weight. Oh, yeah. Um, True or not? Oh, that's completely true. I'm the first person to admit that my partner of seven years can do better if he wants. For some reason, he's not, so I'm not going to complain about it. But no, I believe... Talk about it. And look, I've said this to every couple I meet. It mm. is a fun game to play. People listening to Will and Woody right now, do this at your next event. Mm-hmm. Go up to a couple mm-hmm. and just tell them this. Every relationship in the world abides by one truth. Mm-hmm. One of you can do better. Gee, it's a brutal truth. <laughs> it is. It is a brutal How truth. fun is that? So, so next time you're at a dinner settles. party. And someone you're... settles. So Will's Come in on. a relationship. Yep. Yep. Will. Yeah, yeah. Which we, all one know, we all know that Sam settled there. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that. I'm it's okay so with that. Fun. See how fun but this I'm, is. But I'm the same. But I'm the same as Nate, though. Like that's I'm I'm winning in that situation. Yeah. Ooh. Well, both like, of you. Arguably, both of you if winning. they've yeah. settled, yeah. you've won. Thanks, mate. I it's appreciate true. that. Mm, I've yeah. won. <laughs> yeah. You're I both win. winners. <laughs> I win this. <laughs> but uh, yes, he's very good looking, and he's 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 a science man, so he's very Ooh. smart. Yeah. He's very Ooh, brainy. Yeah. You know, he's a, an infectious disease specialist. Yeah. Oh. And um, he also does triathlons. Wow. So Gee, all things I couldn't be. Less interested in sure um, yeah. science and being outside. <laughs> no, thank you. So, so you, at the start of this viral pandemic, mm. you guys essentially—I mean, even you're already in the bitch position in the relationship, but you couldn't have gone like to further ends of well, the w- spectrum in terms of both yes. what you're providing and uh, how yes, impressive thank you. you are. Thank you. Continu- the roast continues in this interview. <laughs> Started with the <laughs> intro and it just keeps getting fed through the chat. But that is wild, isn't it? I had a very busy year on the couch. <laughs> I had to cook. I had to walk the dog. <laughs> Come on. That you is what you, 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 you just told us that one of your favourite activities, which uh, this is nothing but time consuming, <laughs> is going yes. on Rotten Tomatoes mm-hmm. and... Trying to figure out whether the score which Rotten Tomatoes yes. gave the movie was w- worthy of the movie. I've had a big year. Which is, which I've is had a very busy year. <laughs> it's a fun game. Just go through your favourite films and just see if Rotten Tomatoes agree with you. And, one of and your you'll major, be shocked. Yeah. Australia, pull your cars over. Are you ready for this? <laughs> one of the best films of all time, which yeah. just after Schindler's List, is Sister Act 2. <laughs> Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit. An incredible movie. It's a cracker. Seventeen percent. Yeah, that's a Travis. That's an amazing find. Seventeen yeah, percent. Does your boyfriend get impressed when you bring that to the table <laughs> at dinner when he's saying, "Yeah, we almost got a vaccine for COVID." <laughs> <laughs> not bad. Not bad. <laughs> Sister Act Two is seventeen percent on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> it's the Will and Woody podcast. Right now, we're kicking off the pregnancy story of. <laughs> Tight horn. Uh, we're having a pregnancy story off. 131065 is the number, by the way, if you have a crazy pregnancy story. But there's this woman in the UK, Will. Now, I didn't know that this was biologically possible, but she was pregnant. And then three weeks later, she's hopped on the good foot and done the bad thing. I said that right? And she got pregnant again. <laughs> <laughs> Three, so she that got horn, she, that horn better stop. A, a pregnant woman got pregnant, the horn. got pregnant again, and then wait for it. Yeah. she popped them out together. She so she conceived twice. Yep, within three weeks. Yep, Did, but both babies stayed alive. Yes, and they both popped out alive, but one was significantly smaller because it was three weeks later. That's exactly right. I didn't think that was possible. Because don't you stop ov- don't you stop ovulating once you once once you know the 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 egg has been uh, fertilized so I, to speak. 
I haven't looked into it further, but obviously it is possible given this story. Sounds rare. Dana, you've got a story for us. Yes, so my sister gave birth without knowing she was pregnant. Oh, in, in the... Um, wow. Dana, was that in the toilet? I've heard of that happening. No, no, no. So ah. she was at home and then she was taken to the doctors and told that she was pregnant and having a miscarriage. Oh um, and gosh. then the ambulance got there and said, no, we think you're in labour. Got to the hospital and in 20 minutes I had a neat. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, that is a wild story, can just, Dana. Can I just cut, you know, like, you know, because mm-hmm. we, we, I've heard that, you know, the toilet one and, and whatever else. Yeah. Every other woman I've known that's been pregnant mm. goes through substantial and significant body changes. Yeah, I, yeah. When I, they are pregnant, Dana, do you cr- just skip that when you have those yeah. pop and reveal pregnancies? Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Dana, but like, is it where the baby's located? So sometimes it's a bit more, it's a bit deeper. Yeah, apparently that was. Um, yeah. she just deeper. Didn't move at all. So she didn't move at all. <laughs> Yeah. What do you mean? She did. What do you she mean was in did- bed for nine months <laughs> and she didn't realise she what do you mean? was I just can't believe these stories. But anyway, thanks for the call, Dana. <laughs> what do you mean, mate? It was a bit deeper. I, it's, it's like, not in, like it's she's like within like a the building. Organs. No, no, it's, it's like sometimes she's somewhere on the thirty third floor. No, yeah, that's the thing. No. Sometimes it's like, is that my kidney or a baby? No, and then, then the doctor's Woody, like, unless she's a giant. <laughs> Wait, Dana, hang on. How big's your sister? I mean, like with all with all due respect, like you know. When we say deep, yeah. I mean, it, it, was it plausible that the baby was missing inside her? <laughs> yeah, um, she right. barely put on weight. So. She barely put on weight. I don't understand yeah, this. Yeah, they're just deep down there, man. Uh, let's go to Sophie. <laughs> what does that even mean? It means they're like within the organs and stuff. Like, the they baby's sort of... not within the organs, they... mate. It's in the uterus. No, let's they... go to Sophie, shall we? Sophie, we're taking pregnancy stories. I mean, this is pretty wild stuff. Uh, Sophie, crack into yours. <laughs> it's in the organs. Um, so... I actually went to um, the doctor after getting married and got an IUD put in so I don't get pregnant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And then about three, four weeks later, I ended up getting pregnant. And okay. so when I went to the doctor, I found out that I had two uteruses and they've only blocked one from getting pregnant. Wow. Oh, <laughs> you had uteri. Uteri, I think, is the technical term for more than one uterus. Yes. I Correct. Don't I don't know and that so at all, but yeah. Had mm. I had I not got an IUD done, I could have gotten double pregnant. Double weeks pregnancy. After each other. Oh wait, so Sophie, yeah. are you saying because I mean this all began? This all began all this pregnancy off stuff yeah. began because Woody was telling us a story about a woman who got pregnant and then got pregnant three weeks later after she got pregnant. Yeah. Do you think she do had think dual she had uteruses? Uteri. I uteri. mean, it, it could be. Yeah, it could be possible because be, I know yeah, someone yeah. else whose kids are like three months apart yeah. because she had two uteruses so, as well. Oh Sophie, what do you do Lord. with your spare uterus? You know, do you just, you know, put your spare luggage <laughs> in there? Or? Someone who needs it. No. <laughs> um, well, I guess I have to put an IUD for both of oh, them so now. you block. Mm. So you, you got to block. You got to block both. It's like when you got a blood nose and you get and you have to put two <laughs> bits of cotton wool up there. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Sophie. Wow, that is wild. Spare, you, spare uterus. How about that? Yeah. Do you you have three? No. It's the Will and Woody podcast. I want to give people a giggle with a prank call that we made yep. earlier today. Uh, before we play, just to give a bit of context, there's some news today mm. about a pigeon that apparently flew from Oregon all the way to Australia. They found this pigeon, and unfortunately, they want to kill this pigeon because I think it's got coronavirus. But anyway, it's a bit stiff. I, I mean, like you know, I, I, geez, Dan. Yeah, let yeah I mean, them. you put a, you put a couple of you know people who actually had the virus in a hotel. This guy, we don't even know he's got the virus. We're going to kill him. Yeah, put him in a like, nice... Well, um, sort of a welcome. What does that say about Australia? I agree. Yeah, he's, fly, he's flying across the Pacific. Yeah. Okay, mate, welcome. Pigeons will never come here when they hear about this news. And we and love I, pigeons here in Australia. <laughs> anyway, the prank call, let's get to that. Uh, yeah. I had the idea of yeah. calling uh, this guy uh, called Jonathan, yeah. who is the secretary of Pigeon Fanciers Society, of the Pigeon Fanciers Society. Mm. And I was going to say, my son, He's Junior, the secretary, by the way. We couldn't get under the guy, the top dog. He's just, oh, no, the top dog guy's far too busy. He's off. Um, Looking at pigeons. <laughs> but, uh, but I had the yeah. idea that uh, you are my son, so I'm going to call yeah. him as a guy called Brad from Oregon, yeah. and you are my son, and you've lost your pigeon, and we think it's flown to Australia, so I was going to ask Jonathan if he has seen said pigeon. Yeah, so it's wild. Have a listen to this, everyone. Jonathan speaking. Hello. Hey, Jonathan. My name is Brad Walker. I'm calling from Oregon. How are you this afternoon? 
good yourself? I, I, look, I'm not bad, uh, Jonathan. Uh, basically, I don't know if you've heard the news, but there was a pigeon About race in Melbourne. Yeah. Okay, great. Mm. Uh, listen, uh, one, my son, uh, Junior, uh, he had a pigeon in the race as well. Uh, his little bird mm-hmm. uh, called, called Thumper. And mm-hmm. basically, I, I think maybe his bird, Thumper, has followed the other bird potentially over to Melbourne, Australia. Mm-hmm. Have you heard about a second bird over there? Uh, not at the moment, no. You got, a, you got a cockatoo in the background there? Uh, that's a rooster. That's a rooster. <laughs> Yeah, that's a beautiful yeah. rooster. Beautiful rooster. <laughs> uh, sorry, back on track. Uh, you haven't heard there's a second bird? No, I haven't. Dad. I've been flat chat with work today, so Dad. I haven't really followed up the story other than Dad. what I saw this morning. Okay, no, uh, two seconds, Jonathan. Junior! Junior! I, Junior! 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 I am talking to an adult right now. If you can just please be quiet. Sorry about that, Jonathan. That's my son that's there in the cool. background. Hey, I'm just going to step into the room real quick here, Jonathan. Um... Uh, Jonathan, I, I, I've been I've been calling places in Melbourne, Australia, all night, mm-hmm. uh, just trying to find my little boy's bird Thumper, and I'm, I'm, he's starting to lose a bit of hope, and he's getting a little bit emotional. So, can you make a are you are you able to make a pigeon noise at all? Can you do that? Because because the thing is, I mean, I was just hoping that there could be some sort of sound of a bird on the phone, and then I can tell he's a four year old boy, and I was just wondering if you could make some sort of noise or something so I can tell him that that's his bird and. And we can go to sleep. <laughs> I'm gonna say. Okay. Just before you do it, though, just make sure I'm, I'll put my boy on the phone so he can hear it. I'm in another room right now. He'd probably know that's a rooster. Are you there, Jonathan? Yeah. Uh, are you trying? Are you going to a real bird? Is that? Yeah, I'm out in the back of the thing. Oh, right. Amazing. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh. I'll, Tuesday, I'll call my son. Hey, yo, yo, Junior. Yeah. Come and jump on the phone, Junior. All right. Uh, someone wants to talk to you. Uh, hello. Oh, hey. How are you? Oh, uh, yeah, I- I'm good, thanks, Mister. That's good. Uh, you got a uh, uh, my my bird? You got Thumper? Uh, maybe. What's he look like? Oh, well, that sounds like a like a rooster, sir. <laughs> yeah, there's one of them in the background too. All right. Oh, uh, but you got Thumper? What does he look like? Oh, he's like what? But he's got a uh, like, gray stripes. Yeah, it could be him. Could be him. Wow, Dad! He got Thumper. I know, I know, son. He's found Thumper. Oh, I got it. Why don't you give me back the phone? Give me back the phone, <laughs> Junior. Yeah. Well, that is just super news, Jonathan. Yeah. Are you there? Which radio station? Is <laughs> it's the Will and Woody podcast. Right now, though, I've got possibly the strangest requests. Of a phone call we've ever had on this show. Here we go. But I'm looking forward to seeing who calls. Okay. 131065 is the phone number. Give us a call if you've given birth to more, more than 10 kids. So you're not including 10? I mean, I'd take 10. What about. But I, but I want more than 10. Yeah. I just don't know if anyone <laughs> listening has had that many children. I told you well, it was an outrageous request, man. You're going to shoot for the moon here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 131065, give us yeah. a call if you've given birth to more than 10 children. Would we take seven? No, that is well under. Meet me at eight. I think if you shoot for the moon and you hit Sputnik, then that's a good thing. That's a satellite that goes around the moon. Sputnik, I think it's pronounced, Sputnik actually. Sputnik goes around the moon. Doesn't it? Anyway, I'm, I'm shooting for 11. If you fall either side of 11... I, I get it. If you've got eight and above, give us a call. I'm sure it'll work. Eight and above. Come on, Will. It's still sexy. Ten or more kids. <laughs> That's the challenge. <laughs> Ed, you're one of 18. No, no. Me, my mum is one of 18. Wow. Wee. Amazing. That is extraordinary gear, but you didn't give birth to 18. <laughs> Not personally, no. Well, no. then I don't want to hear ah. from you, Ed. So I've got a question. Where are the women out there? Will. Where are the mums? Will, let's, yes. let's, let's pad for a second here. Let yeah, the producers yeah. do their thing. I'm sure we'll get one. Yeah, but yeah. when you get someone on who's yeah. given birth to more than 10 people, yeah. what, what do you want to ask them? Great question, Woods. Great question. So a woman in the UK uh, has given birth to 11 kids via surrogacy. Well, let's keep talking to Suzanne about this. Hey, Suzanne, Suzanne. have you given birth to more than 10 people? Yeah, I've got 13. Oh! One husband. Congratulations, Suzanne. Oh, it was easy. <laughs> it was easy? Does it get easier? I don't think there's any great thing about it. Yeah, I, I was blessed. 
You oh, bl- oh, that's, that's lovely. So you're obviously very lucky. Oh, what the hell was I that? I was very blessed. Oh, nice, man. <laughs> and you said it gets easier as it goes on. Oh, yeah. Oh, my last one was hard. Okay. Oh. Are you talking about the actual birth? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, my last one was probably one of my longest. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, I think it was my number eight was my quickest, 14 minutes. Yeah, right, yeah. 14 minutes. 14 Jeez. minutes just whacked it right really out there. flew out of there, didn't yeah. it? Hey, Suzanne, did you, did, did, you, <laughs> oh, yeah. did you want 13 kids? Like when, when you were... I wanted one. Wow. Well, a bit wow. over, a bit over. You <laughs> <know>? <laughs> yeah. Slightly my missed husband, the mark. My husband always said six. He was, okay. Oh, and then you doubled it. He wanted six, you but it you know what? Yeah. We yeah. were blessed. Yeah, yeah. No, I love I love your attitude there, Suzanne. Yeah. Now, Suzanne, the reason I, I talk about that, first of all, have you got like an acronym to remember them all? Oh, no, I just remember them all. Oh, nice. Cool. Well, they're, they're your children at the end of the day. And I mean, it was, I don't know, just one of my daughters, my son was trying to get through to you, apparently. Okay. And oh. he rang my daughter, and my daughter said, Mum, just ring this number. Perfect. They want well, to know who's got you more are. than 10 kids. And here yes. you are. That's how you got on the radio. Nice Beautiful. bit. Now, um, there's a woman in the UK who had 11 children via surrogacy. So she got 11 other people, obviously, to have the baby for oh, her. Oh, I had 13 by natural. Bang. Yeah, that's what I wanted, Suzanne. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. What would you like to say to the woman that gave, birth, well, had 11 surrogate births? Well, it's, it's 11 surrogate, well, I hope she knows all their fathers, for one. Yep. Yeah, wow. Um, yeah, good sledge. I hope she can give the time to her children. Yeah. Uh, treat each and every one of them as equal. Yeah. Love them all, cherish them all. Perfect. And just, you know, try to be the best mother that you can. Suzanne, you're a yeah. beautiful woman. She you really are a beautiful is. woman. Nice one. It's are, a blessing. They are wise words. She wanted one. Her husband wanted well six. They doubled yeah. it. Yep. And one. Overshot, Why not? overshot the green by a bit, but uh, <laughs> they're blessed. See what you're hearing. Find us on Instagram and Facebook. Search Will and Woody.